Hey guys, what's going on? Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to do a brief video about Keenbox Z, specifically my experience with it, um, the timeline I've had with it, and the surgeries I've received. So a little bit about myself. My name's Javier. I'm 23 years old, and I've had Keenbox for about a year or so. So right now it's January 2021. Uh, I became symptomatic around January 2020. Um, no serious, no real event has caused my keen box. Just at some point, it just my wrist started hurting. Uh, but I wasn't diagnosed with it till February. Like I said, I never had a traumatic event that caused it, from what I understand or from what I remember. Never fell. But I did notice that my pain, my, my wrist started to hurt from doing you know normal daily activities like opening doors and stuff like that, working out. Uh, so I decided to get checked out and. Personally, I'm a pretty active person, uh, active guy. I like to work out a lot. Uh, I like to rock climb, stuff like that. Things that require my the use of my hands and my arms. And so, when my wrist started hurting, you know, pretty bad, and I started losing mobility and and strength, uh, and also my job is it requires me to do like physical labor. I decided to get it checked out, and I got an MRI in February 2020. That's when they discovered I had. A vascular necrosis of the lunate bone, which is Keenbox disease. Now, if you don't understand what that means, or you're you're still learning about it, in case you got diagnosed with it um, at some time, essentially what happens is your lunate bone loses vascularity, and so it starts to deteriorate and die. So when I first got diagnosed with it, they told me I had stage one B, two A. So Keenbox is uh, rated in different stages: so one, two, three, and four. Four means it's pretty much almost collapsed at that point, and it's not salvageable from what I understand, and one is very early. So they caught it pretty early for me. And so the first thing that my doctor wanted to do was something pretty conservative. He just wanted to put me in a cast for two months to see if, uh, by preventing any further trauma from it, if, if my progression would stop. And by doing that, you know, uh, my wrist would, wouldn't get any worse. So they did that, and after being in a cast for about two months, my keen box just continued to get worse, so it didn't work. So then they did a conservative surgery. Um, essentially what they did was they did two different operations called a radial cord decompression and a capitate shortening osteotomy, and this has worked for some people. Uh, essentially what they do is they inflict damage on other parts of your wrist and forearm, essentially, and this induces blood flow to you know to the damage areas and hopefully by inducing blood flow to your wrist area it would revascularize and heal your your lunate bone which was uh starting to degrade for me my my wrist my lunate bone specifically wasn't getting any better but it wasn't getting any worse which is a good thing after this surgery so um it was it had worked at least that's what my doctor thought and then a couple months down the road, you know, they, I was doing physical therapy to get my strength and my mobility back in my wrist from being in a cast for so long. And when they did a CT scan around, I think it was August of 2020 or September, they saw that my keen box actually had came back and it went from a stage 1B to a, to a 3B, 4A. So my, my lunate bed actually almost collapsed completely. And uh, I noticed that m even though my mobility had come back, I still wasn't getting any stronger, and uh, it was still hurting pretty bad. I couldn't really do anything. I couldn't even do a push-up. <clears throat> so at that point, my doctor was like, hey, to be honest, there's not that many options with, with this condition that you have. It's not much known about it, so we're going to have to do a fusion. And if you don't know what a fusion is, um, essentially what they do is there's about seven, seven bones, I believe, maybe eight. Uh, bones in your wrist, and they fuse them all together as one bone, and this essentially this prevents trauma to your lunate bone specifically, but the cons of it is you have a fused wrist. You can't move it at all. It's, just, it's like a robot. It's like a robot wrist. So he told me that, and I didn't, I didn't really want to do that because I spoke to my brother, who's also a medical doctor, and he advised me not to do that, and essentially through YouTube, we came across a guy, a surgeon named, named Dr. James Higgins, who who offers a experimental microsurgery procedure that's had really good success in the past 10 years or so. 
based off the data. And essentially what it is, and I'll link the video I saw, um, is he, he takes a piece of your knee out that's not detrimental to the structure, and along with the blood vessel and some cartilage, and he shapes it to the form of your lunate bone, and he puts it into your, and he grafts it there. And then he attaches the blood supply. So now you have a live blood vessel that can bring blood flow to your damaged lunate bone and heal it. And like I said, it, it's had good success. So I was I was interested in about that. So I contacted him, was able to get in contact. The only thing is because I'm in the I work for the government, since I'm in the military, uh, I can't really receive outside care. So turns out there's only there's a couple of guys who know how to do this um, innovative surgery. And one of them has to be a, a military surgeon, so I got in contact with that person. And they checked out my CT scan, said I qualified for it, and they they believe that based off the results um, and based off my condition that it would work for me too. So they scheduled it, and I was pretty happy. And I got the – it's called the MFT. Um, it stands for something. I don't know what it stands for, but it's a really long name. Uh, I got the surgery in mid-October. And based off his research, it shows it's about a nine month recovery for both your wrist and knee altogether. Um, I mean, they are inducing trauma to your knee, so you have to do rehab for both of them, and you're in a cast for three months after your surgery. So, like I said, I got I, I got the surgery. I wanted. Uh, I was happy about it, and I'm about close to three. I'm like three and a half months out from it, and. Uh, I'm about to receive the second part of the surgery is essentially they take out uh, pins and the hardware that's holding the graft in place. But based off the CT scan that I received, um, or yeah, the CT scan that I received a couple weeks ago, and I talked to my surgeon about it, you know, two days ago, he said that my bone's looking good. Um, it's looking healed, and I'm, I'm on track to, to heal up and do the things I want to do, which I'm happy about. And I have my last surgery scheduled for in a couple days to take out the hardware. In terms of the recovery, uh, for my wrist, he just said, like, it will just have to, you know, do the same thing in rehab to do mobility exercises to gain back, you know, most of that uh, mobility that you, that I used to have. Um, I understand I'm not going to have full mobility, but I'll have a majority of my range of motion back, uh, about 85% or so, which is better than a fused wrist. And most of my strength, from what I understand, is co will come back to through therapy. And then for the knee... I'm not gonna lie, the knee hurt pretty bad. Uh, for the first month or so, I had trouble walking, just because it's uh, they did inflict a pretty big damage to my knee. Um, but now, like I said, I'm three and a half months out from from the surgery, and I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I should be able to start running this this month, which I'm happy about, and I'm starting to weight lift again with my you know doing squats, and I'm doing pretty light weights, you know, 150 pounds, 160 pounds for squats. But uh, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I, you know, I'm on track to go to get a full recovery. So that's that's pretty much it, guys. I'll, you know, I'll update you more uh, as months go by to show you how I've recovered um, after this next surgery I get, and I'll just show you, you know, that that it worked, which I'm happy about. So if you if you do have Keenbox disease, you got recently diagnosed with it. Um, like I said, I know it's a pretty scary thing, um, especially if you're an active person, so don't lose hope. And if the surgeries that they're trying to give you don't work or they failed, uh, maybe consider trying to get this one. Um, like I said, it's, it's had good success in the past. And I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll link the video that I watched so you guys have a better understanding of what the surgeon says in his own words. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and leave comments, and I'll tr try to answer them. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys.